Most of the studies that have been cited in defense of the safety of mefloquine and tafenequine have been deeply flawed to the extent that they have not been informed by methods of modern psychiatric epidemiology. One has to ask the right questions and use validated instruments to determine if psychiatric symptoms are present in individuals who are taking these drugs. And for the most part, the entire body of literature uh, on the adverse effects of these drugs have not been informed by specific knowledge in this area. And, and we see the ignorance. We, we see the ignorance in this area very plainly in the discussions uh, related to the, the claimed safety of tafenequin. So the very best evidence suggests that, for example, abnormal dreams and insomnia, which are critical symptoms, because these warn of the development of the more serious adverse effect and, and require the drug's immediate discontinuation. Insomnia and abnormal dreams occur in at least one in seven individuals taking mefloquine prophylactically. This is an established fact. We know this. And high quality studies convincingly establish this. And yet sponsors of tafenequine for prophylactic use in conducting the study uh, in Australian military personnel in East Timor found nowhere close to that rate of adverse effects among the group taking mefloquine. And why is that? Is that because they simply weren't experiencing those symptoms? Or could it be because the studies were fundamentally flawed, biased, inherently deeply flawed, and were not designed to reliably and validly assess that adverse effect? And I would propose to you that those individuals, those epidemiologists who are reviewing the existing literature, are generally not experts in this aspect of mental health epidemiology. and don't have a good explanation for why the authors of the Tefenequin and Mefloquin study, the pivotal study that's led to Tefenequin's licensing, found such a different outcome.